Hey, Karina here, your Lucid Living Coach. It's pretty late. I'm tired. I had a really long day. But I wanted to get on here and talk a little bit about what's going on. We're coming into Scorpio season tomorrow. And the sun moves into Scorpio. So, happy birthday to all my Scorpios. Um, I'm going to get on my headphones because I am on my laptop right now. And I have my uh, microphone. So the energy is building up. It's definitely getting intense. We could feel it. It could be more irritable, short-tempered. Um, Mars is in Libra which is at its detriment. It's like opposite from its home. And Mars is our aggression. It's not really happy here, but the focus is on relationships and the relationships that aren't working in our life. So, here we go. All right. So, hello, hello, good evening. If you want to throw up your uh, sun sign, feel free to do that. Karina, your lucid living coach. I'm going to be looking here at this chart. Um, the chart is for the new moon. And I just wanted to say these are my new glasses for blue light protection. Um, I got them on Amazon. They're really good um, to for this blue light. That's not that great. You know, it really makes us, like, um, tired, but then it keeps us up all night. Um, and then, like, we're not getting really good sleep. And so it messes up our melatonin, and it can affect the uh, the pineal gland. Um, which is our connection and psychic powers, you know. So I thought I'd get these because I'm doing a lot more work online. And my screen time is like, it's kind of like ridiculous. When they give you the little report, you're like, wow, I'm totally on my phone all the time. So I thought I'd get these. So we have the new moon in Scorpio coming up on the 27th. Tomorrow, the sun will enter Scorpio at 9.19 a.m. So get ready for that. Scorpio season has begun. It's going to be a very intense, deep, transformational. Um, secrets are going to be revealed. Like It's going to be some really dirty shit going on because Mercury retrograde is on Halloween in Scorpio that I'm going to be talking about in this video, the new moon in Scorpio that's happening on the 27th and pretty much the buildup uh, from today. So one, two, three, four, five, next five days, what we got going on. So first of all, I'd like to talk about just the energy in our atmosphere. So we have the geomagnetic storm coming in tomorrow. It's going to be a 5 kp. Um, yesterday, no, today or yesterday? I think it was yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was a 4 kp. Today was chill, and tomorrow it's going to be a 5 kp. So the coronal hole of the sun has been facing Earth a couple times. Now, this um, is happening more often. I think because the coronal hole of the sun has gotten bigger. Um, I think this is why we're having a lot of back-to-back -back energies coming through. Now, because of the magnetic pole shift, the jet streams have shifted as well, leaving us very vulnerable to radiation coming from the sun and the geomagnetic energy. Um, and that could also be causing a lot of this um, global weather 
changes, earthquakes, anxieties, um, ringing in the ears, lethargic, tiredness. Um, it's going to affect, I think, everyone a little bit differently. So just keep that in mind because you know, you can go to the doctor and they, they might put you on a medication that's like not necessary because it's like a collective thing. Like we're all going through it. So we don't need to go running to certain things. So I think that it's important that we all do our own individual research to really um, see how these energies are affecting us. Hence, maybe getting the app and knowing and me putting out these videos and seeing how it has affected you and how you're feeling. So find out tomorrow how you're feeling when the, the geomagnetic energy meter reads about 5 KP. It's expecting. We'll know when I get the alert and I will let you guys know. So that being said, this new moon in Scorpio will be very intense because um, the moon and the sun will be conjunct in Scorpio at four degrees. And Uranus is at four degrees in Taurus, opposing it. And it's retrograde. So it's, it's, it's lost a little bit of its power because it's closer to Earth. Now, Uranus opposing the new moon, I believe you might find out some information, okay? And also, there will be some kind of light shed on some of our relationships. And also, we will want and have a need for freedom. Maybe freedom from certain relationships. It could be um, freedom or just feeling like you don't want to be tied down. There might be a, an epiphany or an awakening happening. Now, Mars is in detriment, like I said, in Libra. And it's squaring Pluto and Saturn. It's squaring today, too. This could definitely be pressing on the nerves because Mars and Pluto, they're a lot alike in that Pluto, um, Mar, sorry, Aries ruler is Mars and Scorpio's ruler is Pluto, but its ancient ruler is Mars. So they're like like a higher octave of one another. And this square is, it's about like the lower manifestation symbolizes like difficulty in transcending or growing out of the Mars. So the Mars might be more of, let's say, our negative traits. And Pluto is a higher octave of Mars. So we're trying to transcend this Martian energy of ego and selfishness and aggression and pushiness. And we're trying to get to a state where it's um, more about the transformation and the deep, uh, let's say, healing and metamorphosis that might be it's more like um like being able to transmute that negative energy into something and channel it into something more positive and more like self-reflective and that also was the energy today and it will also be for the new moon what is exciting about this um new moon is that the pars of fortune is on the AC with Gemini. And what that means is it's, it's really focusing and a lot of things are destined um, as far as like, you're going to have good luck. Pars of fortune to me, I think of the, the, 
the Wheel of Fortune in the tarot. It's like there's a lot that's coming in from our the other side, our higher self. We might be getting a lot of information coming in that could be very transformational. Now, Mercury is in shadow right now, and it's shadowing its retrograde, and it will be retrograde in Scorpio on the 31st for three weeks. This is having an effect on our electronics and our communication. Um, I think that there could be a lot of misunderstandings during this time. I think a lot of sensitivities during this time is going to come up. A lot of our unconscious um, com coming to light, maybe things that we didn't really know. Um, there is a healing aspect to this because Chiron is squaring Jupiter, which is conjunct Sirius in. Sagittarius. So it's like we are digging deep on the things that let's say that the luck and the expansion and what we're manifesting in the area of how we are going to liberate ourselves and give ourselves the freedom and the opportunity that we've been desiring. Now, Sirius is, is an asteroid of birthing something new. And this is a part of the transformation that Scorpio is bringing to this number that's going on. Now, Chiron is a centaur like Sagittarius. It is the wounded healer. It is associated a lot with Virgo energy. It's like that mothering earth energy. And I think like we will be healing a lot from our home and our childhood and to be able to step into marrying the things that are actually good for us and seeing the value with ourself and our journey and healing through other to really rebirth this new sense of of um expansion and freedom and good luck that we really want because really luck is preparation meets possibilities and um yeah 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 preparation meets like possibilities and I think that's like a big part of this is Chiron's playing a big role because it's also trining over to Mercury. It's not like a really deep trine, but it is trining over to a lot of the planets in late Scorpio, which is Mercury, Pallas Athena, and Venus. So it's really helping that feminine energy and that um, the, the information that we're getting from our higher self or the divine or our guides is really helping us shed light on the things that we need to know to move forward and heal. Saturn and Pluto are dancing closer and closer together for the major conjunction that's happening in January 2020. They are five degrees apart, and this is a conjunction. It's not an exact conjunction, but wherever Capricorn is in your chart is definitely making and breaking and shaking things up there. And it could be very unsettling when our structures are being um, redefined and crumbling. But there needs to be pretty much a clean foundation 
when a structure's torn down, you have to clean the debris. That's where Virgo comes in. It cleans it up so you can rebuild something. So this time next year, definitely, we'll probably, we'll really know what's going on. We'll know what the foundation looks like for the new beginning and the new start. But right now there's so many endings happening and there's so many changes happening. There's so many shifts, but understanding that, that the higher self God in the universe is always there helping and, and leading and guiding us in the direction that we're supposed to go. That's the three, 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 the mind, body, spirit. They're all working together in our favor of the higher self and the collective. So I've been seeing a lot of three, three, threes, nine, nine, nines, five, five, fives. These are all about ending a cycle, new beginnings, changes in the air, shifts are happening. Um, when we're getting shifts, so um, above, so below, um, when we're getting all these different shifts in the universe, we feel the shifts here, and then the earth feels the shifts, right? Gaia, hence the earthquakes. Like there is some shifting in our foundation that's happening. We're more vulnerable to these kinds of energies coming in that are creating these shifts in our life. The stability just hasn't been there, right? The old world, it was a lot more stable because we knew um, everything. But if you think about it, if you know everything and everything always stays the same, we don't grow, we don't learn, we don't evolve, and we become stagnant and flowing, flowing, Water never dies. So remember that. And we will definitely be tested during this time as far as like not only our, our patients, but being tested by, by others. Um, because Mars is in Libra, it's not at the best area um, for Mars. And Venus is going through a deep transformation and she's really thinking about her strategy as to how she's really going to transmute these energies that are coming forth. So there's just a couple more things I wanted to talk about. Um, the sun is square to Pluto, which it increases your need to want to be in control, right? It also has this ego conflicts um, with other authority or, or people that you might feel that are um, uh, in positions of power. So like a little bit of a power struggle. Um, there could be like a conflict with someone that makes for like an intense experience that can lead to an extreme or destructive behavior. Oh God, Miss Miyagi scared me. I don't like when she goes crazy. Um, the intense experiences could trigger also some deep buried psychological issues involving like fears or losing control or, you know, being abused or anything like that. Um, just let those things come up as they will. So then you could heal from them and kind of move past them. Now, there's this, uh, this Jupiter, let me see. Jupiter square Neptune. And there's a couple opportunities. I mean, you can be hitting rock bottom 
in some kind of old pattern that you had maybe an addictive uh, aspect of yourself, habits. Um, you could be hitting rock bottom with that where you're like needing to have a change or an uh, intervention with yourself. Um, and being more adapt like adaptable to change, I think is very important. With the new world, like it's open world open, nothing stays the same. It's like coming um, home every day from work to have your furniture rearranged. It's unsettling, um, but that's kind of the way of the new world, and it just will keep us um, growing and learning and evolving with the new, the new fast pace age of the internet and and we're learning our value and the, and what is a value instead of just information based uh, world um, because there's so much information out there now that we now are consolidating to find out what is the valuable information what is the true and accurate information and so that's important when we've opened the world up to the internet world where you have information coming from all over the place and it's really hard to decipher what is accurate or true or um, credible, okay? And then the, the more negative aspects to this Jupiter-Neptune square would be like, like jumping into something without thinking about it first, maybe seeing just like with the rose colored glasses on, um, you know, saying something before thinking and with the mercury going retrograde and it's in shadow. So we're already feeling that, that that um, could also be a contributor to this kind of energy as well. And yeah, you know, it, it, it definitely going to shake things up, to say the least, for this new moon. And I hope you guys have a great new beginning for you, Scorpios. Happy birthday. This is your new moon already. Like, literally, Scorpios is having, like, a brand new beginning because their new moon is right out the gate. So any of the birthdays that are 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, 27th especially, 27th especially, and that is a huge shift for your life if your birthday's on the 27th. But any of those, this is like, right out the gate, your new beginnings happening for your uh, birthday. And yeah, so I love you guys. And I just wanted to also let you know that I am hosting a workshop in Oakland at Lake Merritt for anyone that wants to learn more about reading their own birth chart. This is happening Saturday, the 23rd at two o'clock at the, at the Bell on Bellevue, the Bellevue club, the Bellevue club. I think it's five, two, five Bellevue Ave in, in Oakland on Lake Merritt. Get your tickets early. Early bird special is $20. You could Venmo me at Lucid Living Coach and put in the notes that it's for the workshop for the basic chart reading. Otherwise, anything after, I think it's after the, uh, let's see, is that what I put? Yeah, anything after the 12th, like after the full, the full moon in Taurus will be $50 because I need to get a head count 
because I'm paying for the space. Okay, well, I hope to see you there. Hope to join you. You're going to learn a lot about how to read your chart as far as like where the house is, predictive astrology, how to really uh, read your horoscopes correctly. And I'm going to be talking about the major things in the chart that I see. So with the eclipses that are happening, um, the north and south node that will be shifting soon into Gemini in 2020. I'll be talking about that. And um, yeah, the elements. And it's going to be super fun and exciting and all kinds of good, juicy information. So you're not going to want to miss that. Thank you for tuning in. And I'll leave the link below. All right. Peace out. You're Lucy Living Coach.